Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies and their share price. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new and without further ado, let's get right into it. Today we're going to analyze an article titled, Should You Buy SoFi Stock While It's Below $7 Per Share? So let's talk about it. SoFi Technologies, if you didn't know, is a fintech company or a financial technology company that essentially operates as a digital bank. According to the article, SoFi Technologies has recently shifted from a hyped up growth stock to a profitable fintech powerhouse. Yet despite this good news, SoFi stock is still down around 30% this year to where now it's trading at around $7 per share. This then begs the question, will this company ever recover and is SoFi ever going to go back up in the respected share price or should you avoid this stock? And company. Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. If you didn't know, SoFi Technologies operates as a digital bank to where they offer an all-in-one digital finance app that offers things such as lending, banking, and many other services, including investing. SoFi Technologies has gained some renown due to their easy-to-use app and their low-fee lending products. And this app has become increasingly popular with the younger generation because it really resonates with young high earners, young professionals, and various millennials. The increase in both both their memberships and products has helped accelerate this company's overall trajectory in both their earnings and their revenues. This also allows the company to cross-sell new products because if somebody comes in just wanting a credit card or a bank account, SoFi Technologies can then sell them on other products that they offer to help that individual out in regards to their financial needs. But now let's talk about this company's fundamentals in regards to why they are a good investment decision even at $7 per share. SoFi brought in positive net income in the fourth quarter of 2023, but despite this good news, their share price continuously dropped. Then for the next quarter, which would be quarter one of 2024, they also brought in another round of positive net income. However, this did not budge the stock very much. On top of that, the company continuously guided for third quarter and full year gap profitability, which again is great news, but despite all of this good news, it seems that the share price continuously trends downwards, and here's why. There are several explanations for this strange phenomenon and this rather odd reaction to SoFi continuously landing in regards to profitability. Because you would think with SoFi's excellent financial performance and them continuously bringing in gap profitability, this should actually move their shares higher. But it seems that now that SoFi has actually met some of their goals and has actually become profitable, investors are pocketing their gains by selling the shares and taking profits. We have to remember that over the year of 2023, SoFi's shares gained around 116%, which is why smart investors are selling the company right now to take profits. Now this by no means indicates that SoFi is a bad company, but rather it means that these smart investors are waiting for the company's share price to drop a little lower before reinvesting back into this company. Another reason why some investors may have sold their shares is because of SoFi's competition. Take for instance Ally Bank. For context, I personally hold both SoFi Technologies and Ally Bank in my portfolio, but here's why some investors may be selling SoFi stock to buy Ally Bank. Both SoFi and Ally Bank are very comparable because they are in all digital bank, both located in the United States. And in many ways, they are direct competitors to each other. However, Ally stock trades at a significant discount than SoFi Technologies and their SOFI share price. As an example, when we look at the prominent accounting ratios, such as their PE ratios, their PS multiples, and their price to tangible book value, we see that Ally Financial actually beats SoFi in all of these metrics. In general, we would want these accounting ratios to be low, and that would indicate a good buying opportunity as long as the company's growth in regards to the revenue and earnings are positive. So now let's compare these ratios between SoFi and Ally, starting off with their price to earnings ratio. This metric compares the company's market cap to the amount of earnings that they are bringing in on a forward basis over the next year. And SoFi's valuation is around 35.9, while Ally Financial's valuation for this particular accounting ratio is 7.318. So clearly Ally Financial is substantially cheaper and a better buying opportunity opportunity than SoFi in this regard. Likewise, we can also look at their price to sales ratio, which compares the company's market capitalization to the amount of revenues that they are bringing in. And ideally, we would want these metrics low. And for SoFi, they have a PS ratio of 3.04, while Ally Financial has a metric of 1.353. So again, Ally Financial is the better value opportunity here. Lastly, let's talk about their price to tangible book value to where SoFi has a
has a valuation of 1.909 and Ally Financial has a valuation of 1.131. It seems that investors are forgetting to discount these accounting ratios based upon the company's growth and here's what I mean. These are not compelling arguments because SoFi is growing their revenues much faster than Ally Bank. As an example, over the past three years, SoFi has grown their revenues by around 178% compared to Ally's 8% increase over that same time period. This means that SoFi deserves much higher accounting ratios than Ally Financial because we have to discount these metrics off of their revenue growth. So investors are misled by simply comparing these companies by their accounting ratios without taking into consideration the growth in their earnings as well as their revenues. So at first glance, it seems that Ally Financial is a better buying opportunity than SoFi based upon these accounting ratios, but when we discount these and take into consideration the growth rates of their earnings as well as their revenues, it seems that SoFi is actually the better investment here. More good news is that management is guiding for their adjusted net revenue to come in at around 15% higher during the second quarter and 16% higher for the full year on a year-over-year -year basis, which is great news for investors. SoFi also has three main revenue segments to where one of them is their financial services segment and that is their fastest growing segment right now and it's expected to increase by 75% year-over-year during the year of 2024, which is more great news for investors. When we look at their metrics, we see that their financial services segment combined with their technology platform accounted for roughly 38% of their total revenues during the year of 2023. But for the year of 2024, these two revenue segments are anticipated to make up approximately 50% of their revenue, which is great news. This is mainly because their main revenue segment, which is their lending business, is expected to hold steady or even drop by 3% in the amount of revenue that is coming in, and this is mainly due to the pressure from a high interest rate environment, which we find ourselves in right now. So, with SoFi Technologies increasingly adding new members to their customer base, cross-selling new products, increasing the amount of revenues, and also planning to be profitable for the entire year, it seems that SoFi Technologies is a bargain buy at $7 per share. That's why five years from now, you may thank yourself for buying SoFi stock at this current price point. However, in no way am I indicating that this company couldn't fall lower in their share price, because some price targets come in at around $5 per share for this company. And that's why I would encourage you to always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. But with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next YT video.